Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are once again tackling the text tool. We're talking about text and font replacement in Finale, and uh, that's actually in the edit menu, and it's actually called text search and replace. Now, this text search and replace function uh, goes a little bit outside of the text tool uh, because it applies to all text in Finale. So even though it's a little bit more than what's in the text tool, I thought it'd be worth doing in this category because it's it's very much related and very much relevant to the conversation. So let's check this out. Text search and replace, we get this little text search and replace window. Now you may be familiar with something like this from other programs and word processors or spreadsheet programs, you might have something similar. And it's kind of simple the way that this works is basically you search for something and replace it with something. So uh, very simply, we can just uh, search for a word. I'm gonna search for the word text because that appears many times in this particular file. And I'm gonna replace it with the word red. And again, it will search everywhere in, in Finale uh, right now because I have it set to search everywhere. I'll talk about that in a second. And very simply, we just choose replace all, and you'll see that every instance of the word text gets uh, changed to the word red. So uh, you can see how this can be really handy. Now there are some parameters here that, that are worth noting. There's an op option to match case, and if I were to change the capital T to a lowercase t here, this is going to result in not replacing any of those words because the, the text in the score is actually a capital T, so it's not going to work. Uh, if I were to change the search uh, here to a capital T, then it would go back uh, and work. So um, with this unchecked, it doesn't matter what the case is that you're searching for in this field. Um, with it checked, it's, it, it will matter. You also have the option for whole words, which sometimes can be important. So you'll see that I have uh, in the oboe part two English horn here, two oboe. Well, let's say I want to change it to, uh, I'm going to search for two and I'm going to change it to uh, change two just for the heck of it. And I'm not going to use the whole words just to show you what happens. And I choose replace all. And you'll see that, it, yes, it did change the two to change two. But it also changed it up here because it saw the word tool and recognized that the T-O exists in the word tool as well. Um, so that is going to happen. But if we choose to uh, only search whole words, then it will uh, ignore that word tool and only search for the two uh, if, it's a, if it's a word itself. So now it does the same thing, but it leaves that alone. So sometimes, depending on what it is you're changing, how you're changing it, matching the whole words is, is kind of important. The third option here, all open documents. Now this option will only be available if you have more than one document open. And in this uh, case I do, I have uh, file one here, file uh, three, let's put that over there, file two and file three. They happen to be copies of each other, but uh, they're exactly the same except for the numbers up here. And uh, this will allow you to make changes across multiple files, which can be really handy. So let's say for example, uh, you've written English horn here, but you're you know, composer says, I don't want to see English horn, I want to see cor anglais. Well, you know, if you have 15 files or something and you need to convert all the English horn words to cor anglais, this is going to be a huge pain in the neck unless you do it like this. English horn, cor anglais, I'm matching case, I'm looking for whole words and I'm going to uh, apply it to all open documents. And you can see all of the instances of English horn I have just on this first page, there's three of them. Right, and we click, we click uh, replace all, and you can see that it will fix it here on this file, but it will also fix it here on this file and on this file. So you can see the usefulness of this. You know, imagine you're uh, you're copying a musical, and there's 20, 25 different files, and you've got a lead character, and his name is Tom, and your writer decides that we need to change the lead character's name to Jerry. Well, this would be a huge pain in the neck to go through every single file and find every instance of the word Tom. Um, so this is where this really comes in handy because you can just, you know, do Tom and replace it with Jerry. Um, you know, make sure that you have all open documents checked and then make sure that all of the files, all 25 files are open at the same time and then run this text search and replace and all in one shot, every instance of the word Tom will be replaced by the word Jerry. So really, really powerful, uh, it, you know, particularly for, for you know, cases like that. 
Now we can refine the search even further by using this section on the bottom left. Currently it's searching everywhere, but if we uncheck that, we'll get to see what it is that Finale is actually searching. And now all of these uh, options are checked, but we can see what we have. We have text expressions, which are the green guys. Um, the file info, which is the information in the score manager in the file info side, it will search all of these text fields as well with that option checked. Staff names, staff style names, group names, articulation, smart shapes, lyrics, which can be really handy. You know, if you've got a, a certain word in a, in a song that repeats over and over again, you can search the lyrics and change that, which is really handy. Uh, text blocks, of course, are the text blocks related to the text tool, and even the text within the, repeats, within the repeat tool can be uh, searched as well. So with these options, let's say we want to do something, you know what, we're only going to uh, replace it in the text expression. So you can ignore all of these, turn them all off, and now we can do that same uh, replacement we did before, changing the word text to the word red. And now that it's only searching text expressions, it's only going to change this one instance where this te expression text is now changed to exp expression red leaving all of the other ones alone. So an incredible amount of flexibility um, in terms of where you can search and replace, in terms of how you can search and replace, and you know, with open documents, whole words, match case, etc. Um, so just a lot of flexibility right there alone. Now, in addition to searching for words and replacing them with other words, we can also search for styles and replace them with other styles just by checking these boxes if we want. So um, with these boxes checked, it will start searching for a style. So we check the style button and we get sort of a font selection here. And this is the search for style. So in this case, you know, I have a lot of Times New Roman in this file, so I can go in here and say, I wanna change all of my Times New Roman to something else. So just select Times New Roman in the style here and replace it with, we can choose a different font. So we can go here and do, uh, let's find Garamond, there it is. Um, so basically all this is doing is it's replacing um, the Times New Roman style with the Garamond style. And if you have nothing in the search or replace fields here, uh, it won't care what you're replacing and searching for. It will just replace the style. So replace all, and you can see that now all of the text that was Times New Roman is now Garamond. So in one fell swoop, you can change uh, the text uh, style in your file just like that. Just gonna undo that. Uh, we have further control here within, this, uh, within these boxes. You can see on the right-hand side, we have the options for size, fixed size, bold, italics, underline, and hidden. With the size blank, it's gonna search for any size, but you can specifically search for a, a size to change. So if I only wanted to change size 14 to Garamond, then it would only search the text blocks that are size 14 and change those. And you can see that this was 14, these guys are 14, but this was a larger size, so this remains Times New Roman. So there's, you know, there's even more control uh, when you start dealing with size. With it blank again, it will search all sizes and replace it with whatever you wanna do. And then you have these other options here and they all have dashes in them. Basically what this means is that, let's take bold for example, and you can see there's a dash. Basically what it's saying is, I wanna search all styles. So I wanna search the bold state, whether it's bolded or not. That means, that's what dash means. If you uh, change it to a check mark, then you're saying, I wanna search just the bold faced uh, style. So now you're searching for Times New Roman bold. Um, all sizes, of course, you can refine the size here as well, um, but that's what you're searching for. If you leave it unchecked, this means I want to search for Times New Roman that is not bold-faced. So any bold-faced Times New Roman fonts or texts are going to be left alone. So you can do that with all of these styles, with the fixed size state or not, and again with the size if you leave it blank, it's searching all. So just an incredible amount of uh, control over what it is you're searching for. Likewise, in the replace with style section, we have the similar type of options, right? So you can say, I want to replace it with a specific font size. I want it to definitely be 14, no matter what the source uh, searched for size was, right? You can choose, you can say, I want it to always be bold faced. So no matter what you're replacing, it's gonna be bold. If you say, uh, if you uncheck bold, then whatever it is you're replacing will definitely not be bold 
whether or not the original source was bold or not. And again, if it's minus or dashed here, what that means is that you're going to leave the state of the bold faced alone. So if it was originally bold faced, it will stay bold faced. If it was originally not, it will not bold faced, if that makes sense. And again, you can do that with all of these options. So you can just see the incredible amount of uh, possibilities here in terms of searching for specific things and replacing it with specific things. There's just a, a ton of a ton of different options here. And once again, with the search field and replace field uh, left blank, it will only deal with a style, but you can also combine it with a text search and replace with. So let's say I'm gonna set something up here just to kind of show you exactly the power of what this can do. I'm gonna search for the word text I'm going to replace it with the word red, but I'm going to look for Times New Roman 14 point font, right? I'm going to replace it with the word red style Garamond bold uh, 18 point font, right? So what this is saying is that anytime it sees the word text at 14 point Times New Roman font, it's going to change it with the word red at Garamond size 18 bold. And you know what? I can even go further. I'm going to say, I don't want to search everywhere. I just want to do this in the text expressions. Um, again, just setting up the most complicated thing you could think of right here. And if I did that correct, what you'll get is that you're just changing the expression word text to the word red. This is now Garamond 18 bold, right? So you can kind of see the, the, the amount of crazy uh, control that you have. Um, if you manipulate these parameters in certain ways. Incidentally, if you do something like, let me just show you, I'm gonna delete these again, and I'm just gonna do a simple style replacement. So I'm gonna choose Times New Roman, replace all of my Times New Roman with Garamond, uh, not caring about the bold face or size. I'm just gonna do a simple uh, font replacement, Times New Roman for Garamond. Uh, search everywhere, replace all. Again, and now all of my texts are Garamond. Um, you may run into the situation where now when you create a new uh, text block, I'm going to type in some words. Oops, I can't type words. Um, what ends up happening is that this is still Times New Roman. In fact, if we go in here and look, you'll eventually see that uh, Times New Roman is checked. There it is. Um, so this could be a problem because if you've converted everything to Garamond, you want to keep everything as Garamond. So uh, you're going to want these new text blocks to be Garamond as well. Well, this is where we go into the document options. And under the fonts pane in the text section here, there is an option for text block. And you'll notice that it does have an asterisk next to it. And the asterisk in this window means that when you make a change here, it's not going to retroactively change the text blocks that already exist. The text blocks that exist are going to stay however they're set up with the fonts and size and everything. So uh, by changing this, you're only changing the text blocks that are going forward from that point on. So let's go in here and change from Times New Roman to Garamond. Uh, we can keep it at 12 and we can, you know, stylize it however we want to if we need to. And now our default text when we create a new text block is going to be Garamond 12 plain. And again, it won't change the, the other ones retroactively, but I can type in a new text block here. And now this is going to be in my new Garamond text, all right? So that's just kind of... Uh, cleaning this whole thing up. If you're going to do a whole uh, style replacement here, you're probably also going to want to change the uh, the default setting in the document options for the text blocks when they first get created. All right, so I think that's it. There's a there's a ton of things that can be done with this little uh, text search and replace option, and I just showed you a bunch of them, a bunch of different uh, ways that you can use this, and uh, hopefully this will uh, be helpful to you all going forward. All right, thanks for watching. I believe this will be the end of the Tackling the Text Tool series, but you never know. I might think of something else to do, but uh, for now, we'll say goodbye. And uh, I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to subscribe. That would be most appreciated as well. And as always, I will see you soon on the next video.